Hey guys, by viewer request, we're going to talk about the difference between protected and unprotected lithium ion batteries. And for the sake of this video, we're going to leave it just to the 18650s, even though there are other batteries that do come in protected and unprotected format. So we're going to talk about number one, what is the protection? Number two, what are the physical differences in the batteries between protected and unprotected? And lastly, what are the performance differences between the two? All right, so let's get into this and uh, figure this out. So a protected battery has a protection circuit added into it. Typically what you're going to have is a cell, which is your, your battery, and they're going to add a small circuit onto the butt end. There's going to be a wire strip that connects it to the top where there's going to be a connector. And then they're going to wrap it in a fancy wrapper and sell it to you for a lot of money. So. What this does is it accomplishes three things. Number one, it prevents you from over discharging your battery. It prevents you from overcharging your battery and it also will protect your battery from thermal runaway. Now, lithium ion batteries, if you over discharge them, can be very bad because once they, they are discharged, you can start to get corrosion on the contact points inside and that can lead to an internal short which can cause the battery to go kaboom next time you put it on the charger. And if you don't believe me guys, Google lithium ion battery explosion, they are nasty. Hoverboards explode, laptops explode, iPhones explode, pretty much anything with these has a capability of exploding. In fact, they've even brought down airplanes, you know, having these batteries in airplanes, they've taken them down. So these are, can be a very, very dangerous thing and really important to pay attention to. So as I said, it pre prevents from over discharge. Most of these batteries, you have to check their individual specifications, but typically the protection kicks in at like 2.7 or 2.8 volts, and it will shut the battery down completely so that you don't uh, damage it. And it will reactivate once you put it into a charger. It does the same thing for overcharging. It will typically, if your battery is rated for 4.2 volts, it will not allow it to accept more charge than that. Once again, you overcharge your battery, same result, you can damage it, they can go kaboom. Lastly, temperature control. I think a lot of them are set at around 160 degrees C Celsius. And uh, what that does is prevents the uh, battery from getting too hot, whether that's from being in a flashlight or from a short. Maybe you got water in your flashlight, maybe something got in your tube, anything that causes a short can make that battery heat up very quickly, that protection circuit will shut it down and prevent it from going into thermal runaway. Now, it is not fail-proof. Protected batteries have blown up. Do not kid yourself, it is not 100% safe. It does give you a lot better safety. And part of the reason for that is, is when it comes to these batteries, there's all different chemistries of lithium ion batteries. And they've changed over the years, and some are more dangerous than others. A lot of them, which were really popular for a while, were the INR style batteries, which is uh, what the Samsung is here. And those are pretty dangerous. The INR and the ICR are a pretty unstable uh, group of elements, and they're probably the most common to go boom. However, you take something like your modern IMRs, they're a lot safer chemistry, a lot less likely to go boom. So you often will not ever see protection on an IMR battery. You'll only see it on like the INRs and the ICRs and a bunch of the other different ones. So battery chemistry does play into this as well. So physical differences. I mentioned there's a circuit and a connector and a thing. What you're gonna see, of course, is a length difference. And what you have here is a battery sandwich and you can see we have two protected batteries on the outside and one unprotected on the inside and you can see there is a difference in length. The other difference of course is going to be in this fancy button top on the front. Your unprotecteds are not going to have that. They're typically going to be flat top, possibly even a little bit recessed. So that makes a difference in what flashlights you can buy and what flashlights you can use. There's all different varieties on the market. There are some flashlights that can only use button top protected batteries. There are some flashlights that can only use flat tops. There are some flashlights that can use both. So it is something to pay attention to 
and look up before you go buying a ton of batteries because it's uh, fairly prevalent and there is no set standard as far as what people do or how they do it. It's really just kind of, you know, it depends on the flashlight. Usually often if flashlights have their own built-in protection, they will often only, you know, require you to use the, uh, the flat tops. So usually it's very rare to see a, a flashlight that doesn't have built-in protection that won't let you use protected. I think it's just a liability thing. So those are the physical differences. The protected are bigger and they typically have the button top. Even though some of the unprotected can have button tops, don't think that that's just exclusive to them, but there's, you know, it's gonna be a difference. You're gonna notice a length difference and, and quite a bit between them. So let's talk about performance. Now, protected versus unprotected. That circuit is gonna draw a little bit of voltage and add a little bit of resistance to your flashlight, which is gonna mean Slightly dimmer flashlight, maybe slightly longer run time because you're not drawing as many amps. Is it a huge difference? No. Is it 10%? Probably, give or take. So one thing to pay attention to if you are looking for just this pocket rocket of a flashlight, a protected battery will make that slightly dimmer. So if you are going to be using something for just sheer brightness, you're going to want to go with an unprotected battery, something like this Samsung. This is a high drain Samsung uh, 30Q. This is capable of drawing like 20 amps out of it, which is really astounding. Versus something like this, it's not going to draw 20 amps. It might get 10, maybe 5, who knows. So uh, oftentimes you will never find protected batteries that are high drain. And high drain, does it really matter with most flashlights? No. Because 99% of the flashlights on the market don't draw above 3 amps anyway. And every one of these on the table can do 3 amps. No problem. No issues whatsoever. So there's going to be that little bit of a difference. <clears throat> but it depends on what you're doing. For the casual guy who just has one or two flashlights, it, you know, you're not going to care about that little bit extra. But if you're the kind of guy who really likes pushing the limits, wants the absolute most out of his equipment, you're going to be like me and end up going to the unprotected batteries. So, with all that said, I typically use unprotected batteries most of the time unless the flashlight requires it. I am stupid. <laughs> no, it's just, I'm very careful with my flashlights. I never use, well, for most flashlights, I'm not using them long term. I'm not draining them completely. So they're often going on the charger frequently. I'm not fully discharging them. I'm not running them down to zero. I'm very careful and very safe about my use, so it's not a big deal. For example, my flashlight in my car, I use it here and there, you know, maybe 10, 20 minutes a week. I throw it on the charger, you know, maybe once a week for half an hour or so, and it's good as new. My flashlight's in the house. I don't keep batteries in them. You know, these lithium ions, like I said, it's not worth the risk. I keep them separately. So when I go to use them, I'm typically grabbing, putting a battery in, using the flashlight, and then when I'm done, lots of times I'll throw it on the charger and put the battery away. So, do you need a protective battery? No, as long as you're careful. But if you're the kind of guy who runs your flashlight right down to the end, right down to the last drop of juice, you probably want to go with protected. Because these things, one of the characteristics of lithium ion batteries, they don't drain gradually. They drain and then they just bottom out. I mean, you're just going, the flashlight's nice and bright, and then bam, it's off. And if it isn't off, it's slowly turning off over the course of like a minute, but it goes down really quick and really fast. Not like the old alkaline, well, not old, but not like alkaline batteries, which can take 10, 20, 30 minutes to wind down. These things go quickly. So for me, another benefit to the unprotected is that they turn off slowly. A protected battery, if you reach that limit for voltage, snap, it just turns off. You have no light versus the unprotected if you're in an emergency situation and all of a sudden you notice that light start to dim you can drop down to a lower mode and you got some time where you still have some emergency light those protected once you trip that circuit it's done you're not getting any more juice out of that until you put it on a charger so that is another important thing to note so overall it's a personal decision i am very careful i'm very cautious about charging never over discharging the battery, never leaving them on the charger overnight, things like that. I'm very cautious. So for me, the unprotected batteries are fine. 
For you, it might be a different story. If you are kind of careless, if you are forgetful or anything like that, you should probably consider the protected. But like I said, for 99% of the flashlights on the market, <clears throat> the performance difference between them isn't going to be a big deal. When you do get into the higher end market for flashlights, the really high drain, bright pocket rockets, yes, there will be a difference between them. But until you get to that point, your average through night, own light, night core, things like that, one to the next, it's really not going to matter. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope I answered all your questions. And I know it's really confusing with these batteries because there's so many different chemistries and all that. So what I can tell you guys, if you're going to buy batteries, get yourself a couple of good quality protected batteries. Get yourself a couple of good high drain quality batteries and uh, get yourself some good high capacity batteries and it'll cover all your needs. You have those high capacity batteries for when you just want that long run time. Get your high drains for when you want the most lumens and then those protected ones for maybe when you're going to be out camping for a weekend and you're going to be using that same battery the whole weekend you know and you want that extra protection so you don't overdrain it so there you go hope you enjoyed